Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I have to do it as I have to do the sermon today as an audio file because my video camera isn't working. It's finicky. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just working with what I have. Um, this week's sermon is called make your own list. I I was listening to my grown up Christmas list by Natalie Cole and by Plus One. Um my grown up Christmas list is a song um that I will try to sing because I can't play it because of the rules but I will try and sing it for you. Okay, here it is. And there's a song, uh, a Christian version of that song called My Prayer for, A Prayer for Every Year. It's by the Christian boy band called Plus One. And it goes like this. And both could just say the same thing.
I, I, as I was listening to these two versions of these two songs, I will put both versions on Facebook uh, when I, when I forward this to people. And what I'm going to do today, it's a bit different. I'm going to upload this to Facebook and I'll encourage people to forward it. Because obviously I can't forward it to everybody, but forward it um, to people that you think um, could benefit from it. When I was uh, listening to the to this to these two different versions of different songs, I was like, I think sometimes I was thinking to myself. I think sometimes Christians make things so hard and um, like we just like to change things or whatever and I was also thinking about <laughs> um, December, uh, uh, the song September, um, uh, we all know, we all know the version by um, Earth, Wind, and Fire, but what many people don't know is that Kirk Franklin had a version as well of that song, and a Christian version, and I was, I was listening to this and going, why couldn't you just sing the other version? If you're going to do the song, why not just do the song the way it's written? It's not, like, unholy or whatever. <laughs> and I think sometimes Christians um, make things um, so difficult. And I think it's time for us to not only be Christians, but to be... To not only to be follower, followers of Christ, but to be human as well. And I was thinking of the whole going back to um, my going up Christmas list slash a prayer for every year. I was thinking of that the, those ideas, uh, that idea of making a list. And I was thinking it would be cool if people actually made a list of what they really see for their lives, not only for their lives, but for the world, and to make it not, to make it Christ-centered, but without making it churchy. I think that we try so hard to be, um, to, to represent, Christ that sometimes we get so lost in trying to represent him is, um, that we forget to be human and I think um, our humanity is what uh, people connect to and I think when you when you get down to the basis of being human that's what people connect to, to. and I was I was totally thinking about the ministry of Jesus and how he does, how he did things. And he, Jesus connected with people before he healed them, before he restored them. He connected with them on a human level. And I think as Christians, uh, sometimes we are so busy 
but it's starting to be like Christ that we forget to be just regular people. And I think that sometimes um, we are completely strained by the world because not because of uh, Jesus or whatever, but because we just um, we just forget to be human <laughs> as well. And I don't, I don't think we've trained the world outside of the church to see us as human, human too. Yes, I am a Christian, and I do love Jesus. But I do get lonely sometimes. I do get bored. I do get frustrated, and that's all my humanity. And it's okay. And I think when the world sees us as more human, they'll be like, I can do that too. But I think it's, it's hard for us because we so want to be like Christ that we kind of lose our humanity and we kind of... Um, we kind of become to we going to come become so heavenly minded that we're not no earthly good and I think there needs to be a balance. Yes, we need to be followers of Jesus Christ. Yes, we need to be in but not of but we need to have people see our humanity as well and not not to be ashamed of our humanity and not to use it to bamboozle people. Oh, I'm just human. But but use it in a way that can can draw people to Christ. Um, and I think and I think uh, it was not Jesus's divinity that drew people to him. It was Jesus' humanity. And then after they saw his humanity, they show him his, they sh he showed them his divinity. And that caused people to flock to him because he, he managed to, act, he managed to, both relate to them on a human level and minister to them on a divine level. And I think uh, uh, that we have to find the balance of, as his followers. And I think that's what he wants from us is to find the balance as his followers. And I think that's what we need to do. And I sense the Lord saying that it is time for the church to not just try and uh, um, uh, ca cast brains um, like try and fit Try and change things that don't need to be changing, like try and change the words of songs that don't need changing, or try and do this where it doesn't belong to make it more Christian or more acceptable. It's time for the world to, to um, it's time for the church to uh, both show our humanity and God's divinity. Our humanity will lead someone to God's humanity, um, um, God's divinity. I was watching, I was in church last week, and the pastor was talking about um, how um, this pastor loves to tell stories about his family and about his uh, personal experiences. 
and he was telling a story about a story he told um, about him getting upset, and he was talking about this guy who who was so stubborn and didn't want to come to church, but his wife um, uh, um, made him come to church that one day, and he, he was so resistant to coming to the Lord, but when he heard this pastor and how he got upset, um, um, about this, this thing, the guy said, well, I could do that too. And he got saved and, and, um, led to the Lord, not by the, the pastor's interpretation of scripture or eisegesis, but, um, by his humanity. Because the guy thought if he could get upset and be a pastor, I can do this too. And I think a lot of people see Christians and they're like, I don't think I can do that because this person is so well put together. They might have been, they might have been uh, toe up before, but now they're so well put together, I don't think I can do that. The thing we try to hide is the thing that will, that is most likely the thing that will lead people to Jesus. The imperfection, the, fi the fear, the insecurity is most likely the thing that will lead people to Jesus because they'll think if she's in insecure and she deals with this and I deal with this, maybe Jesus will be something for me too. And there's also the other side where some people wear it too much, they wear it like a badge and they expect people to feel sorry for them. And that too will turn people off because if all you're walking around in your humanity feeling sad and depressed, some people may be like, I don't want that God if, if he's making that person feel like that. So I think it's a fine line and it's a different line for everybody. And God is going to be using people's um, humanity this week to lead to his divinity. And he wants me to to say, have a listening ear this week because he's going to use the things that you think are mess ups that are screw ups that he can possibly use to lead somebody to Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do. I thank you for what you're saying. I thank you for what you're doing, Lord Jesus. Permeate the atmosphere. Thank you for, thank you for all those wonderful people whom this message will be forwarded to in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Okay, guys, see you next week, maybe on video, maybe on audio. Remember to forward this to whoever you know that can, that can be helped by it. Bye.